All right, so now that we've gotten some discussion uh, out of the way, kind of some uh, key terms, you know, different types of costs and relevant range, so on, we, uh, we need to consider this concept of break-even point. Now, our chapter discusses costs and volume uh, in terms of how much money we're going to make, but before we can make any money, we need to make sure that we don't lose any money. So we're going to uh, introduce a couple more terms here. The first one is uh, establishing a break-even point, okay? And it says the break-even point is the point in which the volume the volume of activity for an organization's revenues and expenses are equal. So let's um, let's look at this little example they give, and we'll learn a new term along the way. Sales, you all know what sales are. Sales are two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in this particular example, and we're going to subtract out of that variable expenses. Probably the biggest variable expense, although there's some fixed cost uh, component involved in it, is cost of goods sold. But we're going to subtract out all of our variable expenses, okay, whether they're product related uh, or not. And we have $150,000, okay. When we subtract the $150,000 in variable expenses from the sales of $250,000, we're left with $100,000 and we call this contribution margin, okay? What we're saying is that this figure right here is this company's current contribution to making a profit. Now, unfortunately, we can't call it profit because now we have to go and subtract out all the fixed expenses. So what this diagram is showing us is an example of break-even points. So net income in this particular case is zero. $250,000 in sales minus $150,000 in variable expenses and $100,000 in fixed expenses gives us no net income and no net loss. So we have a few uh, approaches. Your textbook may actually cover three different approaches. I'm only going to look at two of these. Um, we can we can perform, um, no, I guess we are going to look at three. We are going to look at three. Um, we can look at break-even analysis using uh, essentially just basic seventh grade algebra, and we call this the equation approach, where we're simply solving for x. We're always going to be doing the exact same thing, um, we just might do it a little bit differently depending on your individual learning style. So here we have an example where we're trying to determine break-even analysis, and it looks like we have um, a product, surfboards, that are being sold for $500 each. Unit sales price is $500, and we need to determine how many of these I, these uh, surfboards we need to sell to break even. Other important information is that our variable cost per unit is $300, okay? And we also have fixed expenses of $80,000. So um, solving for X, we're going to determine ultimately that, uh, bear with me one second, we're going to determine that we have to sell 400 surfboards uh, to break even. I do not personally use the equation approach, but if we if we determine that we have this $200, by the way, represents contribution margin, and we're going to look at the contribution margin next. But looking at this equation, if we uh, if we establish that x or if we if we establish that x is 400 we will ultimately end up with $0 income. 200 times 400 equals 80,000 minus $80,000 in fixed cost equals zero. Again, this is the equation approach to break-even analysis. We also have the contribution margin approach and this is the approach that I believe to be 
uh, the best because it lays things out a little bit more, uh, helps us make good business sense. Sometimes when we solve for X, um, we get so caught up in the basic math aspect of what we're doing, we fail to ask ourselves the question, Does our do our numbers make any sense? Okay, we might end up having sales of 250,000 and net income of 5 million, uh, if we're not careful. So um, here we have a situation where we are, we, we said, okay, on the previous slide, we, we have already determined that our break-even point is 400 surfboards, and that's going to be the case whether we use the equation method, the contribution margin uh, approach, or any other method. Now we're looking at a situation where we are selling 500 surfboards. Uh, we were selling those, if you recall, for $500 a piece. 500 times 500 is 250000 our variable expenses have gone up some to 150,000 um, when we have a contribution margin of 100,000. Now, notice our fixed costs did not change. They're 80,000, and so this particular setup would yield a net income of $20,000. We can simply take our sales price of $500, subtract out our variable cost per surfboard of 300 and we can come up with a $200 uh, contribution margin per surfboard. So if we think about this, we can, we can take our fixed costs right here, our fixed expenses, in our case, they're $80,000, and we can plot this here as the numerator. We can take what's called the unit contribution margin. So we have the total contribution margin here is 100000 but the per unit contribution margin is $200. We can plot this here as our denominator and simply divide the 80000 by the $200 unit contribution margin, and we're going to come up with a break-even point of 400 surfboards. Again, it's going to be the same no matter what method we use. And so we can always check our math. If we're talking about 400 surfboards, our sales go from 250 to 200,000, but our variable expenses also go down proportionally to 120,000. We've got the math here, 400 units times $500 is a 200,000, and our variable cost, same 400 units times the variable cost is 120,000. That gives us a contribution margin of 80,000. Again, our fixed expenses, 80000 net income of zero. All right. We can also determine what is referred to as the contribution margin ratio. And this is particularly helpful whenever we're trying to determine our break-even point in sales dollars. What we've been looking at so far is we've said, how many uh, surfboards do we have to sell in units to break even, okay? But we can use the contribution margin ratio approach to determine um, how many or how much we're going to have to sell in total dollars. And that may be more useful to us because if we find that, you know, we have to sell a million dollars of a product and our company's never sold more than $400,000 of any one product, we may, have a, we may have a problem. So looking at the equation here, it is simply fixed expenses, which in our case was $80,000 divided by the contribution margin ratio. Well, what is the contribution margin ratio? We said that our cost per unit was $500 minus $300 in variable cost. Yes, that's going to give us $200. Now I'm drawing this out more than what you would do, but I just want you to see everything. Now we're going to take that number and we're going to divide it 
by our cost, and that's going to give us 40%. 40%. Okay. We take our $80,000 in fixed expenses. We divide by 0.4. That equals $200,000 in sales, sales dollars. If we divide this, this now that's the answer right there. $200,000 is the answer. That's the break even point in sales dollars. But if we were to divide this by our sales price, we would come up with 400. That's the number in units that we've already established as our break even point. You see what I did there? So I'm just checking my math to make sure I haven't done anything kind of crazy. All right. And here's everything that I just did. Again, I let it draw out a little bit more uh, with the stuff on the calculator, but it looks awfully easy when everything is just provided to you like this. <clears throat> but you're going to have to be able to do this uh, some on your own. Otherwise, you're going to get onto an exam and you're going to freeze up and you're going to mess everything up. $200,000 break even point in sales dollars. All right. Okay. We can also um, graph, use a graphing process to determine uh, net loss, break even point, profit, whatever it is we want to do, really. Here we have some budgeted um, sales unit figures. We're saying, okay, this is what's going to happen if we sell 300 units, 400 units, and 500 units. We notice that sales increases with each of these uh, projections, as does variable expense. Okay, Therefore, contribution margin, total contribution margin also goes up. But look what happens with fixed expenses. They are fixed, so they stay the same. So here we've already we've already done this one. 400 units, that's our break-even point. We also looked briefly at 500 units. We had a contribution margin of 100,000, fixed expenses of 80, and that produced $20,000 net income. But over here with 300 units, we're actually losing 20,000. Why? Because fixed expenses exceed contribution margin of $60,000. We can set this up with a graph if we want to. And the first thing that we're going to do, now these, this looks like we're using um, some different numbers. We're not using the 80,000. So this example, I can already tell you, came from somewhere else. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plot a straight line for our number of fixed expenses. Um, my poor eyes tell me that this is roughly... $110,000 in uh, fixed expenses. How do I know that? Right here. It says on, over here on the vertical axis, I see dollars. These dollars can actually refer to both expenses and to revenues. So here we have, we're going we're gonna to plot this here. This is our initial point, 110000 The line is straight. It does not go up it does not go down as the units of production increase. Why? Because we're talking about fixed costs. This would not be the truth with variable costs. Okay. This red line here, I want you to understand, it says total expenses, but what this red line actually represents is variable expenses. Now, the reason we're calling it total expenses is because our starting point is at this as it is at this one hundred ten thousand. Let's say that um, we make that one unit of production costs us three hundred dollars. Well, then our total costs are going to be roughly one hundred and ten thousand three hundred, right? So we're going to start at total fixed costs, and then each unit of production is going to increase our total expenses. 
by in our case when we were looking at the surfboards by three hundred dollars that was our variable cost per unit all right i skipped over one slide to, so we could get to this one in the interest of time we also have total sales now i want to point out something this line right here should really probably start here at zero um, but that's okay I, I think you can make that connection in your mind and so as total sales go up we have some interesting things going on here what I want you to understand is there are three parts of this graph that you need to focus on we need to focus on this area right in here we need to focus at the uh, intersect point and then we need to focus on this area right here this is the good area okay let's look at one more of these slides or the same slide we have our loss area here and this is even though even though we're selling an item our sales price per unit is higher than our variable cost per unit remember we're starting our sales down here at zero. We started our variable costs at roughly 110,000 in this example. Okay, so we have to sell roughly, looks like, whoops, looks like we have to sell, I don't know, just kind of eyeballing this, about 390 units to get to the break even point. So between zero units and let's just say 389 units, we have a net loss at 390 units roughly we have a break even point and at 391 units and above we have profit okay all right this video is getting kind of long so we're going to stop it here and we'll continue on with another video next